All right, today I'm going to show you um, how to uh, add some tolerances to dimensions. I'm going to use a part that um, I've made uh, at home um, and actually 3D printed it. Um, and I'm going to use a standard template, not one of the ones that are normally found uh, in um, uh, Eagle. Um, it's just one of the standard SolidWorks templates, and there's a reason I'm using that, and I'll show you in just a bit. <coughs> the um, this is the part I'm going to bring in a regular front view and a top view and an ISO view. And then I'm going to click the green check. I'm going to select uh, the border of uh, this view and change that to shaded with edges and move it over here. Um, and then I'm going to zoom in on these parts. Maybe what I'll do is make them a little bit bigger. Uh, so if I select the front view and change the uh, scale to um, from one half, let's try, um, there's no two thirds. If I go one to one, that's pretty big. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than I want. So let's try two thirds. That looks better. Um, I like that. So I'm going to put some dimensions on this. And the reason I chose this part is because I can add some linear dimensions. Um, and of course, that didn't go where I wanted it. Uh, so we'll add that. We'll add this, this one. Um, and we will add. Uh, that dimension, and then we'll add an overall out here. And then inside, we'll um, take this inner diameter, and we'll dimension that also. Um, when I'm done with my dimensions, I can hit the green check. I'm going to select this view again, the border, and I'm going to say that I want this to show hidden lines, to show that there is an internal uh, diameter there, and that's what we dimension here. So, what I want to do is I want to change up these dimensions. Um, I want to add some tolerances to it. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the dimension. Uh, we'll select this five inch diameter, and that brings up the um, property manager. In the property manager, if I look at the tolerance precision, it says none. So, I'm going to pick and the very first one, just kind of go down the road with each one of these dimensions. I'm going to turn this into a basic dimension. So when I select basic, what it does is it puts a box around it. And then I, a basic dimension is normally associated with uh, position in geometric tolerancing, and we'll be getting into that in a couple of weeks. Um, but for right now, I just want to show you that that's how you turn a dimension into a basic dimension in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, the next one that we'll pick is... Um, this uh, half inch dimension. Go over to the property manager. We'll select the next um, tolerance down, which is bilateral. And when you look at it, uh, and I think we maybe need to um, move this uh, text for the dimension, but you can see it gives us a plus minus. Um, and what that means is. Um, we're going to have a different number for the upper limit than we will for the lower limit. So I'm going to just take the text and drag it here so that it comes out like that. And then I'm going to do the old tried and true method of uh, moving the arrows out by selecting the, the uh, node uh, on the back side of the arrowhead to bring it out like that. Um, and I'm going to change my numbers uh, for my upper and lower limits. So I'm going to make the upper limit point. Um, 0 0.005, and when I s double click this box, uh, the 5 shows up, and then I'm going to um, type in 0 0.002 and hit enter, and then that number becomes the lower limit. So now my upper limit is 5 thousandths over the nominal, and my lower limit is 2 thousandths under the nominal. 
So there we go. That's a bilateral. Um, if we want to do a uh, the next one, let's pick this 1.250. I'll select that dimension. The property manager comes up. Again, we have no tolerance. So I'm going to change that to um, limits. So now we have two numbers. They both say 1.250 because we haven't set the limits yet. So they're both reading the nominal dimension. So if I go in my upper limit, I'm going to use the same numbers I used uh, for the bilateral, 0 0.005 for my upper. Hit enter, and it, the, notice the number changes to 1.255 now. And now for my lower limit over here, I'm going to type in 0 0.002 and hit enter. And now my lower limit is 1.248. The nominal is still 1.250. But my upper limit is 5,000 so over, and my lower limit is 2,000 so under. And that's how the, the um, symmetric uh, dimension would read. Uh, again, if I want to, I can move my numbers, uh, my text, so that it's up, it's outside the arrow, the uh, dimension line with an extension um, to make it a little easier to read. Um, and then for my last one, I'm going to go up to this um, inside diameter, and I'm going to modify that. And I'm going to use the very last um, option that we're going to deal with in this class, and that's symmetric. And so my symmetric tolerance means I'm going to have the same limits for the upper limit as I am for the lower. So instead of having a plus 0 0.000 and a minus 0 0.00, it just is plus minus. And notice that in the property manager, I only have one option to change the numbers. So if I make this 0 0.005 and hit enter, now the, the dimension reads 3.665 plus or minus 0 0.005. There was something else I wanted to show, and that was... Um, um, it didn't quite work out because I already had the, uh, t the, the tent would open. But um, one of the things that you might run into is um, when you're setting up a drawing and you're starting to dimension, you might have dimensions that look odd. For example, uh, if I go in here uh, and I want to change, let's say, my linear dimensions, and I want the style to be, uh, and, and the, the style is ISO. This is what the dimension is going to look like. So if I select OK, and now you look at these dimensions, they've all changed to ISO dimensions, um, the dimensioning standard, and um, it doesn't really look right. So if you're pretty sure you're, um, um, you selected ANSI for your dimension standard, but the dimensions still look odd, go back in and check your um, your dimension your standard. Now, when I look at the overall standard, it still says ANSI. But when I start to look at these dimensions here, they all say ANSI for their basic dimension standard until I get to linear. And that one says ISO. Even though the overall standard is ANSI, sometimes you may find that individual dimension standards uh, have changed or been changed by someone to ISO. So you want to go ahead and make sure that they all say ANSI. Um, you can do that by um, another method. Um, you can go into the drafting standard for the overall and change the overall to ISO or one of the other ones, then go back to ANSI modified or ANSI. Let's go back to ANSI. Now when I look at each one of these individual dimensions, they say ANSI in the linear that was ISO now says ANSI also. Um, when I go back to my drafting standard overall, I might want to go ahead and check uppercase for notes and uppercase for tables. So if I'm adding a revision table or notes, they will automatically be um, uppercase. So now my dimensions are back to being ANSI standard, um, looking like they're supposed to, and that should cover it. Um, if you have any questions, email me, and um, I will get back to you as quick as I can. Um, there's other things that are 
that are in the works uh, will have access to the uh, text online until May 25th, as soon as uh, we can get their uh, email um, validation straightened out. Um, and uh, I'll probably be trying to put together a group where we can um, all get online at the same time and have some actual conversation. I will update you ASAP uh, by email. So keep looking for emails uh, from me, and I'll keep looking for emails from you. Thanks.